So Roblox is continuing with adding new amazing templates and this time they have added a new platformer place that I'm going to go over in this video but as usual leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get into the video. So once you open studio the new platformer place is going to be right here under the new category. And this is also a series where Roblox is basically upgrading the old places like the FPS system and the laser tag that I already went over. These are something new right but the racing place was actually remade. And my videos on this are also worth checking out, the link is going to be in the description. But for now, let's just go to the platformer template. And this is the first thing we see after we get into this place. Like we just have a really nice environment, maybe with some questionable elements. So let's just see how the first impressions are going to look like. So now this is my character right here and, and you can see that we have a pretty neat movement, as well as the camera following and we can do a bunch of different stuff. When one of these stuff is basically just like double jump, then we can just dash on the ground and in the air and then when you dash and then jump immediately after you just do this like a super jump and a really funny thing is that whenever we super jump and we hit a wall our character basically just bumps into it like this and also after doing the super jump we can jump and then dash in the air again And also I believe that the creator of this template was taking inspiration from the Find Everything game, which is a game that you should definitely check out. But anyways, so we have these one-way platforms that basically just work like, as the name says, one-way platforms that you can just jump at from underneath. And then following this level we have some coins that you can pick up. And now these coins are going to be added to our score on the leaderboard. And right here as you can see we have some moving platforms. And then that's basically all the gameplay mechanics from this level. So that's the first impressions and now let's talk about the assets and everything else in the workspace. Where we basically just have this sphere and these different folders. Where one of the folders is basically another mesh, which seems kind of weird because I think this sphere should also be in the sky meshes folder. But then there is also this addressing with an empty sky decor folder, so I don't know what's that for. But mostly other than that, everything else is pretty well organized. There are these different assets like the rocks, also some glowing spheres and the lights, where the glowing spheres I think serve as props. And for some reason these are also neon and this one is transparent, so I don't really know what's up with that. But then there are also these columns, which do serve as pillars, as well as some foliage, where this foliage is actually really nice. Then there is the particles, where you have this one plane that's emitting these like lights, or actually dust, and there is also some flower VFXs. And for the whole level itself we basically just have all of this building, like this blank area, which is just a pillar I think, then these color bricks, then these are the jumps, and the whole map layout. And then we just have some steps. So that's basically everything for the level art folder. And there is also the gameplay. And now this gameplay folder, you have all of this different stuff like the coin pickups, which are just these spheres with the coins tag. And how this is going to work is that whenever the server starts, there is going to be a script that's going to change these into coins that the player can pick up to get points. Then we have these moving platforms, where you have the platform itself, as well as the checkpoint 1 and checkpoint 2. And now the moving platform group, it also has a moving platform tag, as well as these attributes, where you have the angular speed of the platform, the delay, and the normal speed value. And another thing that's really cool is this one-way platform, which has a one-way platform tag. But we basically just have this base part that's holding a base one-way cage, where this one is actually a mesh part. And then we have an attachment for the hover VFX, which is a particle emitter. That if I disable, you can see the effect disappear. And there is also some light. So everything from this place is actually pretty easy to use and set up. Like normally you can just pick this ball then make sure that it has the coin tag and then you can just duplicate it and place it whatever. And the same thing goes for these platforms where you only need to have these checkpoints. And if I do a run test, this is going to basically just adjust. And if you want to change these values, you can just go to the moving platform group and just change these values. So I can have it like 0.1 delay with 100 speed and you can see it going like this. 
Okay, it's kind of hard to move it whenever it's like basically just trying to get from one point to another. But we basically just have this platform that we can adjust at runtime. And that would mean that you could have a script that could, for example, just change the position of one of these checkpoints, where it could be at one place for, let's say, five seconds, and then at a different position after that. And it could switch between them. And then there is a lot of different stuff to go over with the scripts, but I first wanted to go over the template library, where this library is basically just an asset pack from this place that you can use to create your own stuff. We have these different assets like the rocks and the foliage, as well as the coin and the platforms right here. So you can use these assets to basically just make like a platformer. And if it comes to scripting, first you should read the readme script, which talks about the platformer template where this template serves as a demonstration of basic platformer mechanics. And then this is the movement that I already talked about. Then there is the project structure, which basically just tells you about the client scripts, which are objects stored in the replica storage, and these scripts have run context set to client, so they don't need to be parented to player scripts. And what the run context is, is a behavior parameter, where it can be set to the client and the server. And setting this to client allows it to basically just be run from the replicated storage. And then you have three different categories of instances, which are these different folders right here, where the platformer folder contains instances and scripts specifically related to the platforming abilities. So stuff like the main control script, remote events for application, effects and effect script and more. So I need to mention that this is really nice having actually a script that tells you how different stuff basically just works. Like in the previous places, we basically just had these billboards, and this is something that I've been already complaining about, because unlike the racing template, the FPS system, and also the laser tag, you had nothing really telling you how to do stuff and explaining to you how different parts of the engine work and how we can use different tools. But now at least the readme script basically just covers it. But continuing, there is the gameplay folder, which contains the instances and scripts related to supplementary gameplay elements, such as moving platforms, coin pickups, and stuff. The utility basically just has these type validators, which are basically just used to validate types. And now the biggest thing from all of this is the character controller, where the controller class found in the replicated storage, then the platformer and scripts, and then the controller script. So it contains the main control code for the character. This includes the movement, momentum, and initializing various actions. Then this basically just explains how it works, but then we have the actions. And these actions are stored in the actions folder, where each action has an animation, effect, and sound whenever it's initiated. And then there are these different variables. And lastly, you have the coin pickup, which just says you that there is this mesh part that later gets replaced by the coin on the client. So let's actually just go to the controller script and just see how it basically just looks like. So you have the controller, which gets added on the on character added function that gets connected in the initialize, and then it basically just binds the render step bind with the on render step function. And now this local script basically just coordinates with the main character controller by just checking the state and velocity on basically every frame. And now let's take a look on, for example, the dash function or the dash module and how everything is basically just set up. So you have the action data table and it has this different stuff like the movement acceleration, the animation, sound effect, that was basically just written in the readme module. But then you basically just have the action that perform function, which gets the attribute to check if the character can dash, then gets an attachment from the character's humanoid root part, I'm guessing, and then just adds a linear velocity instance. And then does a task delay to basically just wait for the cooldown from the constants and dash time to basically just call the instance destroy on the velocity instance. And now the double jump script. This one is pretty similar to the dash, where again you are checking if the character can double jump, it checks the time from the last dash, then sets the double jump attribute and then actually performs the double jump. So if you wanted to add your own mechanics or maybe change some values from these, you can do so by either creating a module or editing an existing one. And if you wanted to for example add a cooldown value, you could do so from the constants, which is stored in the replicated storage and platformer, and then the constant script. This is where you could add a variable, call it like a new mechanic, whatever, and then draw a cooldown. And for setting everything like the actions, where you have the animations, effect, and the sound, like these variables are basically just set from instances in right here, where the animation is just called the dash, and it's an animation instance in the replicated storage, then the platformer, and then the animations folder. 
And for the effect, there is the dash. So there is going to be the effect folder right here with the dash module, as well as the dash particles part right here. And for the sound, there is going to be the sound folder with the sound instances and their IDs. And now for the scripts in the server script service, there is going to be the coin script and the moving platform, where the coin script basically just creates the leader stats, then just removes the session data, and then has an on pickup function, where you have the player and the coin base part where you validate the coin to check if it's a base part, then just check if it has the coin tag, you check if the player already has this coin, then checks if the player has the character then the distance to the coin, then double checks the leader stats with the coins value, and then adds the coins to plus one. And lastly it assigns the coin to the session data. And this on pickup function is called from the remote function called pickup coin remote. And that one is going to be in the replicated storage that gameplay that remotes. And then there is the moving platform script, which gets the instances from the collection service, and then does an on platform added function, where you create a new controller from this module right here. Then it gets added to the session data, and then calls the move method. And now this platform controller, it gets the platform, the checkpoints, and the speed values, an attachment, then the align position. This is what actually is moving the platform. Same with the align orientation, and then it has these different methods like the initialize, and also the move right here as well as the stop and the destroy, which is just a cleanup. And I would like to go over the different stuff like the action manager, also explaining the input categorizer and some different script from here and there, but I sadly won't have enough time. So I'm going to have to call it for today. And make sure you guys check out my UGC items, but that's going to be everything for today. So thank you for watching and see ya.